Yo, 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 what's good, YouTube? This is Vinny's Rap Game Snaps, and I am back with another video today. Today is my 120 subscriber question and answer video. Um, if you've been following my videos, you probably saw the other um, video that had to do with my question and answer thing that I'm doing today. And that was put up because I wanted people to post comments and ask me questions for me to answer. So I'm going to be going back to that video and reading the comments and questions that people ask me and answering them in order of who asked first and then so forth, right? So I also have another question that was submitted a little bit late through a message that I'll get to at the end by a real close buddy of mine. So yeah. I'm going to be answering all of them as thoroughly as I possibly can. I think I have around 14, 13 questions, something like that. Not as many as I was aiming for, but I will try and answer them as thoroughly as possible. Um, so, listen. <laughs> Before I get into anything, um, there's a few things I want to say. I am at 145 subscribers now, and I am thinking of trying another question and answer video when I hit 250 subs so if you guys what am I subscribing you know if you enjoy my videos that's the only that, that's the only like pre prerequisite I don't even know why I cannot speak but shit but yeah prerequisite I guess that's just the word I can't say altogether quickly but yeah if you like my videos, go and subscribe. Once I hit 250 subs, I'm going to be doing another video like this. Um, just to see if I can get more questions and how much more involved I can get the community. Also, everyone that asks a question and every question that I answer from a YouTuber, I will have their channels in the description down below and link with their links. And I want you to do me that favor and go and check out each channel if you haven't heard of some people. Or if even if you know some people. Maybe they got some videos up that you haven't seen yet. Just go check out their channels. They definitely deserve more subscribers even though they have a lot already. But you never have enough subscribers. So go and check out their channels and help me out. Help my homies out and let's all stick together. Um... Is there anything else I wanted to say? No. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, just go into the video right now. Okay. On to the second page so that I can read it from the bottom up. Alright, so the first question was submitted by ThyGamerJ. And he says, congrats on the 120 subs. My question to you is, if you had to sell every game from your collection except for one, which would it be and why? And I thought that that was a really hard question and I still do. It took me a long time to pick a game because what I was trying to do before was pick a game that I thought was amazing, like one of my favorite games of all time or whatever. But the thing is with me, if I finish a game, I'm not going to go back and finish it right after or even like in a month or something like that. I have to wait at least a year or two to like get back into the game. Um, I I don't know if that's just me, but I couldn't really base my answer on like my favorite game of all time or whatever because I know I would not be able to play it over and over and it wouldn't get a lot of use to it. So I decided to pick a game that I own that I put a lot of hours in. So I picked the game I put most hours into and. It's not only that, I really do enjoy this game, I enjoy everything about it, all the different types of gameplay in it, and it's a PlayStation 3 title, it's it's part of a series that I'm a real big fan of, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably enough clues for you guys. Uh, this game is one of my favorites of the series, so I think I just said that, but yeah, and it is none other than Call of Duty Black Ops. Now... I have been a fan of Black Ops since it first came out. I'm still a hardcore fan. I still put in quite a few hours into this game whenever I possibly can. But mostly at the moment I've been focusing on like Modern Warfare 3 because I made a new account on PSN and I'm trying to get my prestige up to where I was on my original account. 
Um, and then I'll probably go back and get my prestige up on this online as well. But I picked this game because I love every single type of gameplay there is. The campaign is my favorite of any first person shooter I've played. I know there's a lot more first person shooters out there that I haven't played yet. So I can't really put those into account. But so far at the moment Call of Duty Black Ops is my favorite um, campaign of a first person shooter I've played this is one of the games that I can actually go back and beat more than once per year. Uh, so far this year, I've probably beaten the campaign two or three times already. So, I'm going through it again actually right now. Probably when I'm done doing this video, I'm going to beat it again. Um, but the story is just amazing. Um, and then on top of that, you got zombies. I'm not that big of a fan of zombies, but when I'm playing with friends, I'm usually the bait. And I just like get killed and then they get their points and I just keep dying because I suck and that's the only thing I'm good at but I still do enjoy zombies um, really solid game in itself there and then on top of all of that you got the multiplayer and the multiplayer is my favorite online experience I have ever had with a game that has been online other than Diablo 2 um, I don't own a physical copy of that but I guess I still kind of have it on my computer, but I can't really show that to you. And on top of that, it's still it wouldn't be a game that I would sell everything else and just keep. Uh, this one, on the other hand, um, would give me hours of nonstop entertainment, and I know that for a fact because, especially when this first came out, I would play like six, seven hours a day. I would literally come home from school. Sometimes I'd even skip school just to play Black Ops. So that's my answer for you. Um, I tried to pick a better game, I tried to pick a, a more retro game, but I know, as I said, I wouldn't be able to play it as often as I want to. So, I wanted to pick a game that I can put used to. So I went with Call of Duty Black Ops, and I'm, I'm actually, I, I, I like this choice. I like this choice because this game is awesome. It's awesome. It's in my top 25 games of all time. Uh, next question is by 97 Retro Game Nerd, and he said, "What is your first video game that you played that you either remember or your parents remember you playing? And how old were you when you played it?" Now, I actually remember this, and I have the game right here. This is actually my original copy of the game. Uh, it's a uh, okay. Let me see how I'm gonna answer this. Okay. So I started playing games when I was four years old because my father bought an NES. And he bought it for him, he bought it for my mom, he bought it for me, he bought it for the entire family. So it wasn't just like an exclusive gift to me, but I put the most use to it. Uh, <laughs> I was four years old and I was already playing games, so that's, that's fucking amazing on its own. Um, and the game I played was the perfect choice for a game to play like the first game I ever played was that game on the NES and um, it's a game that came with the system of course and that is none other than the Mario Kart I mean Mario Kart Super Mario Bros Duck Hunt Kart that's what I meant to say um, out of these two the game that I played first was Duck Hunt and you can just imagine uh, the imagination of a four-year-old just coming true because could you ever imagine yourself shooting stuff through the TV and I got to at four years old my first gaming experience was shooting things in a TV uh, wow it was just an amazing experience I was wowed and I actually still remember uh, I still remember exactly how I felt that day um, it's just an amazing first experience for gaming, and yes, I love Duck Hunt even to this day. Um, Super Mario Bros. is a plus, it's like getting two games in one, so Duck Hunt was the first game I played. I, I really can't say anything else um, on that matter because it's just such an amazing game and it was just such an amazing experience. So, holy shit, yeah! 
Next question. Wow, there's a lot of good questions so far. Um, is by Pandarix with a three. So Pandar three X. I don't know exactly how you want that to be pronounced, so help me out when you see this video. Um, and he said, what is the hardest thing about starting to make videos on YouTube? Hardware and uploading excluded. Um, to be honest, it's finding something to talk about. Now, I'm not talking about like going on YouTube and finding the top topics that everyone is going and watching videos and listening to. Because if you're doing that, you're just talking about random shit and you might not even enjoy it or be interested in it whatsoever. Uh, I'm talking about finding stuff to talk about that you enjoy personally and know that other people will be um, interested in hearing or listening to. Um, now, me, in my case, I really enjoy pickup videos. So I do a lot of pickup videos. Um, and that's another thing that has so many different problems as well because you could have a lot of pickups one week and then have absolutely no pickups the other week and you know that your subscribers are expecting at least a video on that day and I kinda fell behind this week to be honest and I caught myself up but yeah it happens time to time but you always have to have a backup plan, you always have to have something to talk about so that you can keep your viewers engaged on your channel. Um, and that's really hard to do because sometimes you're put on the spot, sometimes you just have nothing to talk about and you still want or need to make a video uh, because you want to have your subscribers coming in and checking out your channel and feeling like your channel is a channel that they can keep coming back to. Um, so that's definitely the hardest part um, another thing that I've been trying to do uh, if you haven't seen already I have my Spit Your Game uh, series that I have been doing on uh, GamingThugs.tk with the Sega Stoner and with EDT1138 and Hap is Fine and Stig's Game Room um, definitely go check out the website link will be in the description down below shameless plug yeah <laughs> but I've been trying to do a little something different because usually I just do pickups and stuff like that. But I've been trying to do like an opinionated news kind of thing when it comes to video games. And I've actually really been enjoying it. I've been picking topics that I want to talk about, not just that are happening because whatever and they're huge news. If I'm not interested in it, I'm not talking about it. And I already said that on my first episode of the series. but. It's the truth. I don't talk about stuff that I don't enjoy unless I'm talking about it to bag on it. <laughs> and that's fun too. But yeah, definitely finding something to talk about that you enjoy and you know that other people enjoy and are interested in talking about is the hardest part. Um, but like, if you're talking about when you're just starting off, it is finding a focus. Because... I had other channels that were just everywhere. I had I had blogs, I had games, I had snapbacks, I had raps, I had uh, random videos, random movies, random just stupidity of me going around town and doing stupid shit, all on one channel, and it just kind of got a little bit too cluttered and busy, and then it failed, over and over again until I learned that I gotta pick something, and I gotta stick with it. And this gaming channel, I've been sticking with it. I've added in movies and comics and stuff, but it all kind of is around the same kind of circle of people on the YouTube community, so it's not that hard to play off. But, yeah, you just got to find you and your vibe and your focus. And then it gets to finding stuff to talk about. <laughs> so... In its own, starting on YouTube is the hardest thing that you have to do on YouTube. Because once you start out, even if it's like, especially if it's your first video, you, you're a little bit shy and you don't give your fullest potential and shit. So you just gotta work your way up and you gotta get used to thinking really quickly. Um, 
the next question. Oh, that that was a really good question. Thank you. Uh, the next question is by Shady Great One, and he said or asked, "What is your favorite platformer game? Any system, and why?" And I have to stick with my usual answer when it comes to platformers and adventure games and just favorite games. And I'm gonna have to say it is the Mega Man series, most specifically Mega Man 2. I love the Mega Man series, I grew up on Mega Man, and that's the biggest reason why I think that it's my favorite platformer. I grew up with it. Um, I've played pretty much all the Mega Mans except the first Mega Man and Mega Man 3, but I recently bought it so I've been playing that one like crazy. Uh, so, yeah. Mega Man is my favorite platformer of all time. Not only because I grew up on it, but because it is a challenge. Even to this day, this game is hard as fuck. It might not be as hard as uh, other games like Ninja Gaiden or stuff like that, but it still is very, very difficult, very challenging. Even on, like, even on easy, it, it kicks my ass. I think it actually kicks my ass even more these days than it did when I was a kid. I think I was a better gamer when I was a kid. But <laughs> I just love having that difficulty. Um, I, don't, I don't enjoy having it being so difficult. Like if I have to play every game and every game I ever play is so hard that it irritates the shit out of me. I would not enjoy that. But when it comes to finding amazing games that I can just go back to when I feel like having a challenge this would be the one to go to if I ever wanted to play a platformer I would pick this over Super Mario Bros any day um, I just love it I love it so hopefully that answers your question that was a really good question as well because I just love talking about Mega Man um, I, yeah I just love it <laughs> as I said multiple times in the past minute yes anyways <laughs> the next question is by nothing usual and he says congrats on 120 um, what game have you put the most hours into and I know you guys would think that it is Call of Duty Black Ops because I picked that because most hours putting the most use into it and whatnot but the most hours I put into a game have actually been put into Diablo 2 uh, for all you guys that aren't really into the PC games, you probably still know what Diablo is, but if you don't, it is a online, well, I play online, but there's a solo play that you can play offline as well. Um, it is a PC game, there we go, that is somewhat like an RPG. It's, it's more of a hack and slash grinding to level up and find magical items and beat bosses and do runs and stuff and uh, just get as powerful as you possibly can and get as rich as you possibly can uh, and I really enjoy it especially the online that's pretty much the only way I played that game uh, because the solo play offline there's way too many hacks and there's so much temptation to just hack everything and just make the game so easy which I did so I stick to the online and I didn't get into the game as soon as it came out because I was still pretty young when it first came out. I got into the game around 2003. Uh, yeah, around 2003 uh, was my first exposure to the game. And I still play it sometimes nowadays. But the first, I'd say, three years that I started playing, and yes, I mean three years, and I mean daily, whenever I had the chance, whenever I had internet access, I would play Diablo 2, two to three, maybe four or five hours a day if I'd be playing with friends. Like, I would come home, eat dinner, play games. Well, playing game, Diablo 2. And then... Some days I'd even skip school just to play Diablo 2 all day. <laughs> and then I kind of went went a little bit hiatus. I came back, started playing again. I started really getting into it around uh, 2007 again. And then I started getting into ladder and hardcore. And just... It got a little bit too much for me because I was playing way too much. 
And then I decided to quit. Once I heard that Diablo 3 was coming out a long time ago, but it never did, and it's coming out tomorrow. Yes! Can't wait till tomorrow. I'm literally gonna wake up in the morning, eat lunch, go to the mall, pick up my game, come back, lock myself in my room, and play that shit. Uh, yes, I will play that shit. But, yeah, Diablo 2 is definitely the game that I spent most hours into. I I lost count after the first, like, month how many hours I put into it. It's it's pretty insane. So, I got, I got really addicted to the game, not gonna lie. And I'm probably gonna get really addicted to the new one as well. Um... The next question is by the Sega Stoner. Yes. And he says, Crun, 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 crun. Wow, I can't speak. Congrats, me, paisano. I don't think that's proper grammar in Italian, but yeah. <laughs> what one game do you need, want? And then he goes on to say, yes. And I pretty much already answered that question in the last question when I started rambling on. And the game that I need slash want is Diablo 3. Uh, I've been waiting two, two, three, something, two to three years. And that pisses me the fuck off. Uh, it's one day away and it's fucking killing me. I probably won't even be able to sleep tonight because I'm so anxious. I want it. I need it. I want to play it. I need to play it. Diablo 3, yes. Um, but yeah, I really, I really do want Diablo 3. Uh, it's one of my most... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. I've waited very impatiently for the longest time for that game to come out. And it finally is tomorrow. So like, oh my god! I want it! Now, now, now! Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, Diablo 3 is my answer. I'm going to stop talking about it before I go nuts on camera. Thank you. It's like a stoner. Yes. Uh, the next... <laughs> wow. Whew. Almost lost my shit there. The next question is from Jacob Rocks 100 And he says, Alright, so my question is, what is your favorite PS3 game? And my favorite PS3 game is a game that I actually... Okay, I tried to pick a game that was a PlayStation 3 exclusive. And to be honest, it's not only because it's a PlayStation 3 exclusive. It's because it is one of my favorite games fucking ever. It is fucking awesome. And I'm saying fucking a lot, so I'm going to stop saying fucking now. But yeah, that game is none other than... Uh, where'd I put it? Yeah. Okay, got it. It is Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. I love this game. Probably everyone else out there loves this game as well, but I really love this game. It still has a sticker on it. What the fuck? I thought I took all the stickers off. But anyways, um, I really enjoy this game. I enjoy the entire series, to be honest. I haven't played the third one yet, because it's still a little bit too expensive for me. But if I end up finding like the box set with that with the figure, I might actually end up just picking it up because I want the figure. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna watch out for that. But this is definitely my favorite PS3 game. The story is awesome. The gameplay is awesome. Everything about it is awesome, and it's better than the first one. And I heard it's better than the third one. So if uh, it can actually keep up with the third one, which I heard is pretty awesome then it must be really good, right? But, even the online on this game is really, really fun. I actually got a little bit addicted to it. <laughs> so, that was really fun. I probably am going to beat this game yet again uh, in the next like week or two, hopefully, if I don't get too addicted to Diablo 3 right away. But, this is definitely my favorite PS3 game. I can't really think of a reason. I just love this game. I love replaying it. Okay, there you go. That's a reason. I have replayed this game... I don't even know how many times. I bought this maybe... Uh, I bought this in January. 
and since then I've played it at played it all the way through I mean at least six times and I'm still going through it again in the next couple weeks so that should tell you that this is an awesome game if you have not played it play it if you haven't played any of the Uncharted start with the first one work your way to the third one trust me they are all awesome but once you get to the second one you will be amazed this one is epic Oof. next question thank you Jacob for asking that question by the way is by CRX form and he says or asks or whatever I my grammar is fucking up uh, what do you oh where do you get your games what can you tell people to help them hunt for games okay most of the time I get my games in thrift stores uh, I get some games in pawn shops and I get some games in retail stores now it all depends what you're looking for if you're looking for current gen games I would suggest going to pawn shops and to your game stops and stuff and buying used uh, I usually never buy new unless I really really want the game and I want to get it when it's released um, if I have to wait at all I usually always buy the used version of the game um, now I know when it comes to current gen systems there's always these DLC codes and shit you might lose all that if you buy used but the truth is you don't need that you can get everything that is given in the code yourself for the most part sometimes it's exclusive through the code but you're not missing out on much because it might just be like a skin it might be a wallpaper it might be a theme or like a set of armor that you can't get that really doesn't help your stats whatsoever just looks cool so fuck it who cares but yeah if you're looking for current gen pawn shops EV games GameStop all that kind of stuff or like any of your game stores really um, if you're looking for more retro stuff thrift stores thrift stores is the place to be um, you find a lot of really good stuff there comics movies VHS DVDs uh, you find NES Atari ColecoVision you might not find a lot of stuff very frequently but you will find stuff and you will find it for very good prices um, what I would suggest also is to check out flea markets because flea markets always have some kind of game vendor it might be a reseller but you'd be able to find the games and um, what I have learned is if you keep on going back to resellers they will start to like you a little bit more I guess and they'll give you more deals uh, you might have to put up with paying a lot more than you want to on some games for a little bit but then they'll start getting a little better once they get to know you and on top of that don't be afraid to trade um, if you have people in your area that want to trade trade if you're on YouTube and people um, want to trade you trade if you have the money then it's no problem sending out a package of games that you have that you don't want to get games that you want and not have to pay money except for the shipping so that's a very good idea as well on top of that Kijiji Craigslist stuff like that I found a lot of deals there a lot of my systems I actually got off of Kijiji which is Canadian Craigslist pretty much I got my Super Nintendo off of there, I got my NES off of there, my Xbox 360, my Xbox, uh, I got my Dreamcast off of there, I got my microphone off of there, and that's like a studio condenser microphone. Uh, I showed it in my room tour right at the beginning. Um, DVDs, games, game lots. You can find a lot on Kijiji and Craigslist. So don't be afraid to go on there. Uh, if it's your first time and you feel a little bit like nervous or whatever, go and meet up with the dude or person, if it's a female, woman, whatever, with a friend. But 
you usually don't need to because everyone's sketch anyways you just get used to it but <laughs> the top places I would suggest to go pawn shops thrift stores and Kijiji and or Chrysalis um, they're definitely your best bets for that and also if you have um, older family members that you know gamed when they were younger or had any systems ask them do you still have your Atari uh, yeah it's in the attic and then they give you a whole fucking box of shit for free garage sales as well in my area I don't have a lot of um, luck with garage sales but I know that there are some amazing garage sales out there that you can find tons of games and systems and whatever you're looking for so just look out for all of that kind of stuff anything that there anywhere that there is used stuff you'll probably find games even if it's just one or two even if it's a really shitty game it might end up being Conquer's Bad Fur Day it might end up being Soikiden 2 you never know you just gotta go and you gotta be persistent and you gotta have some luck that's pretty much all I can really say um, hopefully that answered your question the next question is from my boy RS the Juice 401 and he asked what is your favorite Donkey Kong game on SNES and why <laughs> there's no other way to answer it but with Donkey Kong Country uh, and this is the only way I can answer it because this is the only Donkey Kong game I've played on the SNES it's the only Donkey Kong game I've ever owned it's the only Donkey Kong game I've ever played I've never played two or three so I can't really say that they're my favorite uh, and I actually really like this game so I'm not just saying that this is my favorite because it's the only one I've played but that's the biggest part of it but I really do enjoy this game. I love it as a platformer. I love it um, even for the graphics. The graphics surprise the shit out of me. Um, even to this day, these graphics hold up very well. Um, it's just really awesome. And this is the kind of platformer that you can go and play and not have too much difficulty but not have it be too easy either you just have it the it's just right and you can enjoy yourself while you play it sit back relax pop in donkey kong country and just play through it um so that answers your question because that's the only answer i can really give yeah the next question is from Ramstein fan 234 which is a fellow Canadian uh, shout out to all my Canadians you know the Sega stoner um, I think CRX forum is from Canada as well I think he if I remember correctly he doesn't live too far away from me actually um, and then we got the thrift dwellers <laughs> we got a lot of Canadians out there I'm not too sure about all of them I think Nog Rules is a Canadian as well. Uh, yes. But he said, Congrats on hitting 120 subs, bud. You deserve them all and many more. My question is, What is your favorite food and or drink to have while gaming? And, to be honest, It's very simple. I like... I like my Sprite, that's my favorite drink to have while gaming, Sprite and or water, maybe Coke, and what I would eat, probably some kind of candy like, uh, what are they called, berries, or fuzzy peach, or gummy bears, or gummy worms, or sour keys, something like that, <laughs> yeah. But most of the time, I also eat Oreos, too. I fucking love Oreos. Or leftover. Leftover food. Any fucking kind of leftovers. Anything that I can bring into my room and not make a mess. Pretty much I'll eat. <laughs> but probably things... The thing that I... Um, the drink that I drink most while gaming is Sprite. 
and the thing that I eat most while gaming is gummy bears. Yeah! Uh, the next question is by another Canadian, and it's uh, DC Radaya. I don't know if I said that correctly, so sorry if I didn't, but too bad! Uh, <laughs> And he says, congrats on the 120 subs. Soon it will be over 9,000! <laughs> My question is, who would you rather marry? Catherine or Catherine? And for all you guys that don't know, he's talking about the PS3 Atlas puzzle game, Catherine. There's two Catherines in the game. There's Catherine, that's his, that, Vin, that is Vincent's actual girlfriend. And I actually find that very, very ironic that he asked that question because the main dude's name is Vincent, my name is Vincent. Holy shit! But anyways, uh, <laughs> Catherine with a K is his original girlfriend that he thinks is pregnant and he wants to marry. And then Catherine with a C is the demon woman that fucks with him and his his mistress. And he finds out that she's a demon and still marries her, her, him. Wow, what the fuck? I said him. But he still marries her. Um, to be honest, I'd have to pick Catherine with a C, the demon chick. Um, not only is she much hotter, she is not a, well, she is a liar. And she is a little bit, or very deceptive. But, she didn't lie about being pregnant. And she didn't like stalk my life and made my life a living hell and wished me to die. So, fuck you, Catherine with a K. I'm marrying the demon chick. And she's the, the demon chick, Catherine with a C, is so much more fun, too. So much easier to talk to, uh, probably. She's just outgoing. Catherine with a K is just, oh, you gotta do this, oh, you gotta do that. Get the fuck out of my face. So, yeah, that's my question. <laughs> I mean, answer, that was your question. Uh, we have two more questions left. Um, the second last question is by Asian Sleepy, and uh, he has an amazing channel. I really enjoy his pickups. Collects for one of the greatest systems of all time PlayStation 2 so yeah buddy keep doing what you do um, and he said congratulations on the 126 subs well actually now it's 145 the last time I checked at least I might be went 146 but now I don't know uh, but he asked have you ever wanted to convert an old arcade cabinet into a main cabinet to add to your game collection and I'm not going to lie to you, I did not understand the question when I first read it because I never heard of a main cabinet. I'm not very into cabinets, but I did some research and I found out what it is. And it's pretty much an emulator cabinet. You just load an emulator onto a chip or something like that, or it's like some kind of whatever. And then you replace an old cabinet chip with the emulator. And you can play whatever games you load on to the emulator with the cabinet, with the joystick and with the buttons and everything. And it's really cool. And recently I actually got a chance to use a main cabinet. So it actually added a little bit more understanding and it added a little bit more to my question, to my answer. Why do I keep on saying question? You guys are the ones that ask me questions. I'm answering them. But, yes I would, but it depends on the cabinet. If it's a really awesome game, if it's really classic, like Donkey Kong, or um, Pac-Man, or Qbert, or Street Fighter, or um, something else that's really good, I can't really think of any others on the spot, then I probably won't change the cabinet. But if it's like a double cabinet, or if it's a cabinet that's a fixer-upper, I would definitely put a meme into it. It would be really, really cool to have a meme cabinet in the collection. And when you ask that question, it actually got me thinking, and once I move out, I'm probably going to get into cabinets just so I can get a meme cabinet now. 
Um, it just looks really interesting, and when I got a chance to try one out, it was really fun, really enjoyable. And the controls are completely different, the games just feel very different, and they look a little bit different on the cabinet as well. And it just seems like a really friggin' amazing idea, so... To answer your question plain and simply, Asian Sleepy, yes, I would change or convert an old arcade cabinet into a main cabinet. Um, it seems like a really cool and interesting investment, and it looks like something I would spend a lot of time on because, uh, especially as a kid, I really spent a lot of time in arcades. Nowadays, I really haven't because I haven't seen a lot, so... There's not meant too many arcades around. Uh, there's arcades and movie theaters and airports and shit, but when am I going to go to an airport? And I usually don't go to movie theaters unless I go with friends. And then we watch a movie, it gets a little bit late, the arcade closes, and then we go and eat at Dimitri's, we get fat off of ice cream, uh, and then go home and pass out because I'm too full. And that's usually how it goes. Uh, but... Yes, I really want a main cabinet now, so in the future when I get a place of my own, that's going to be one of the first things I look into. So thank you for asking that question. I really appreciate it actually because it gave me the idea and it gave me a goal later on in, in my collection to have a main cabinet. So thank you very much. And the final question is actually a message that I received uh, from 49er Nation 1. Uh, he's a really, really close buddy of mine. I consider him a friend. He is a friend of mine. He is really cool. We always talk. He always comes on to the stream that I do. Uh, he also chats with me on Skype whenever it's possible and stuff. And he asked me if he can send me a question a little bit late through a message. And I said, sure, why not? And I just got the question uh, yesterday. And he asks, if video games didn't exist and there was no gaming community, what YouTube community would you want to join and get to know more about and why? And that is actually a really awesome question, but I can answer it very easily. Uh, for all you guys that watch my pickup videos, especially for the past couple of months, you know that I've been picking up a lot of movies, a lot of DVDs, a lot of VHSs more recently and uh, some Blu-rays here and there, but I'm probably going to be focusing on Blu-rays nowadays because I found some good prices and some good spots to go hit up, but yes. Uh, if I would have to pick another YouTube community to get into, if games never existed, it would have to be the movie community. Um, I just love watching movies. I personally think that my DVD and my movie collection overall will be bigger than my game collection very soon. Um, I find myself watching movies more than I play video games and I don't regret it one second. I don't... one second. I don't regret it one bit. Oh fuck. I don't regret it one second. That makes no sense. But anyways, now that I got that out of the way... <laughs> Yeah, it would definitely have to be the movie community on YouTube. I actually am trying to get a little bit more involved. I watch a couple of channels, and I really enjoy meeting Flipper's reviews and stuff and his movie pickups. Um, there's a lot of other really cool dudes out there as well. There's there's one guy. Hold on, I don't. I, I want to say his name properly because I really really enjoy his channel, and I'll put his link in the description down below as well. Um, but I really, really enjoy his stuff. Um, it's just awesome. All his DVD collections and Blu-ray collections and going in-depth into everything and, and all that. Uh, he really got me wanting to put on my DVD pickups. Because before, I never really showed my DVD pickups until I saw his videos. Um, I'm looking for his channel right now. Uh... Hold on. Where you at? Where you at? Probably be all the way at the end. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can say this properly. Zerani Zerak. Zerani Zerak. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. 
but his link will be in the description down below. Probably a lot of you know him through his The Multimedia Chronicles series. Um, his DVD, co his movie collection, sorry, because he has a lot of movies, not all on DVD. His movie collection is enormous, and the amount of knowledge that he has on movies is just crazy. Ever since I started watching his channel, I've been putting up my DVD pickups. Um, I've been picking up DVDs for the longest while, and uh, nowadays I've been picking up way more than I usually have, but it was him that brought me towards movies. Um, and movies is actually a really interesting community as well, because I've heard of a lot of movies that I never heard of through YouTube that I've watched and really enjoyed. So. Yeah, that would definitely be the community I would get into if video games and the gaming community on YouTube did not exist. Whew! That is it. That is my question and answer video. It actually ran a little bit longer than I thought it would be, so that was really cool. Um, so, thank you everyone who asked questions. Thank you everyone that has subscribed to my channel. Thank you everyone um, in advance for watching this video when you watch it. I really appreciate all of the support. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be around because that's the main thing that was missing on my other channels, support. I had like 20 subs, I'd be getting shitty views and I just gave up every time. Uh, but now I'm, let me see how many I got. Actually, let's give you the updated number. Yep, 145 subscribers with over 7,500 video views and that is amazing I oh, man just thinking that I'm almost at 10,000 video views and at almost 150 subscribers already that didn't even take that long uh, I just really appreciate everything and um, I don't remember because it was 45 minutes ago but if I did not say this at the beginning or even if I did say it at the beginning, I'm going to say it again. At 250 subs, I will be trying to do another question and answer video. So once I hit 250 subs, I'll be doing another video like this. Hopefully with a wider range of questions going towards movies and video games and maybe even comics. Because now I started collecting comics and stuff. Um, it could be TV shows, cartoons, whatever. I, I'm... I'm just, I, I want to answer your questions. I want to have you guys more involved on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll probably end up doing some kind of series to get you guys making video responses or something. So, I just want you guys to be involved and I want to hear what you guys got to say about what I got to say. So, stay tuned for all that. Rate, comment, subscribe. If you stuck around to the end, you're a champ and congratulations, you made it and peace right after I click this button that makes it stop. Please.